22 years ago, I lived in a house on a lake. I rented a room from a lady that lived in the other room. I had been living with a good friend but moved out and needed a new place. My parents actually found the listing in the newspaper and set me up with it. So, aside from a, a strange living condition of living in a, a two-bedroom bungalow with a complete stranger in the middle of nowhere, it seemed like it was actually going to be pretty nice. My new housemate had a large dog that actually kind of freaked me out a bit. However, she ended up being a super sweet dog. But my housemate was never home too. Between work, her friends, and her boyfriend, I saw her like all of three days out of three months that I lived at the house. So, in the end, I practically took care of the dog. But the thing about this dog though is that she would hide under my housemate's bed until she was hungry or needed to go outside. And never having had dogs, I didn't really know any better. The first month wasn't anything to write home about. I got some awesome photos of the moon over the lake. Somewhere in this time frame, I started recognizing the facts above. I also started getting a weird vibe in the house, I guess. In fact, if I wasn't in my room, I wanted to be in there pretty much only. I also only felt safe during the day. I use that term because the feeling at night was the same as if you think something bad is about to happen. The problem was is that you just couldn't quantify it. But at some point I started hearing knocking noises randomly in the ceiling near the kitchen. I figured that it was just birds because there's a lot around. One afternoon though I decided to check out the attic crawl space located above the kitchen cabinets. It was a wooden door with a single lock or latch on it and a fixed handle. I'd eaten lunch and climbed up there to check it out, opened the door and didn't feel threatened or anything. I peeked my head in and looked left and right over the bedrooms, basic attic, nothing special. I closed the door and climbed down. But from that moment on, something definitely changed. The dog came out of the kitchen and just sort of stared at me, like didn't even move, not an inch. It honestly made me very uneasy. I tried the tricks of outside, treat, play, but she just didn't move. So, in the end, I just sort of went to my room and shut the door. In the weeks that followed, the events became more and more unnerving as well. I began to stop being able to sleep. I turned to leaving music on overnight. Very low volume, but it was on nevertheless. As time passed, I got to where I felt like someone was standing in the corner of my room. One evening, the alarm or clock radio in the living room, it also turned on by itself. At first, I didn't even know it was there to be honest because I never went in there. Nothing in there was mine. Next, over the last two months, it had never gone off. But I asked my housemate when I saw her next about that and she denied setting it. She was also visibly confused as to why it would go off like that. But I began to feel as though I was being watched in every room. I felt as though the thing in my room was always there. I began to wake from sleep for no reason. I began grinding my teeth at night as well. I moved to sleeping with a black light on, the lowest light level that I could get in the room. Music became CDs that would repeat indefinitely. And now I would wake up, look around, and see nothing and then try to go back to sleep. My housemate and a friend were at the house one evening too, and the friend claimed to be a psychic. And she looked dead at me and asked me how I was sleeping. I hadn't seen the housemate in weeks and hadn't told her about my problems. She then tells me that there's apparently an old man in my room and that he doesn't like me asked if there was anything that I could do and she said no. I began addressing this man though, trying to fix things in a desperate attempt to get more sleep and asking him to leave me alone, but life got much worse. I would be on the phone with my now wife and would fall asleep and she would tell me years later that there were really strange sounds that scared her. She said that she would stay on the phone to ensure that nothing happened to me. I began to have regular nightmares every time that I closed my eyes. My work started to suffer. I was exhausted. 
It was around this time too that I began to see a dark cloud like mist that appeared to pour out of the cinder wall. With the lights on, mind you, in the corner of the room the man had been reported standing in. I would walk over and touch the area, but there was never anything there. I would go back to bed and see it still happening. My wife was getting ready one morning and while putting on makeup, she also said that she told me that the face just wasn't hers. She left the bathroom and she never went back in. That night, we were both asleep. She had become accustomed to my nightmares at this point. I had a dream that she and I were in my car driving down the road. It was nice. I look at her and then back at the road in time to see three children in the road. The next sequence happened so fast, I had no time to react. Each hit the windshield and sort of appeared zombie-like. I immediately awoke, obviously. I was sweating, shaking, and scared. My wife was instantly awake also. She asked what happened and I relayed the story above. And her face lost color. She looked very concerned. Thinking it was the content of the dream, I apologized. But she sat silent, long enough to make me wonder if something was wrong with me. She eventually broke the silence and said that just before you woke me, I dreamed that we had just gotten into your car. We left and the next day I found somewhere else to stay. We moved to another state and the first night in the new place, I slept, non-stop, perfectly. I woke up rested and recognized like the silence in my head if that makes sense. And after getting out, I'm more convinced than ever that there is something going on with that house at the lake. So I'll start off by saying that I've always been open-minded. So has my friend and her partner. We've all had our little strange or odd encounters over the years. And sometimes came up with the logical explanation or left it to the unknown, I guess. But we have never had something like this happen before. Well, the car part anyway. So, this happened a couple of hours ago. Me and my friend and her partner were downstairs about to watch a film. Their young son, four years old, was upstairs fast asleep. The stairs are in the front room where we were sat, and their four-week-old daughter was in the Moses basket by the sofa. We had turned off the lights, shut the curtains, and got comfortable. There was a small bang upstairs, so my friend's partner went to check their son. All fine. But as the partner walked down the stairs... He heard almost like a wind chime jingle from their bedroom and said out loud like, huh, that's weird, but put it down to a possible draft somewhere or something. Not even five minutes later, we get comfy, go to watch the film, and me and my friend notice car lights outside, rather bright, so we take a peek. It's their car, full beams on, for about 10 to 15 seconds and then off again, and... We all looked at each other dumbfounded. Then again a bit longer this time. Then the indicators flashed a few times and stopped. And as it stopped, their son screamed like not even a second passed. And he started screaming and crying to the point that he was so wound up that he was nearly sick. Of course, as soon as he screamed, the dad ran straight up as my best friend was breastfeeding. The dad brought him down and he was inconsolable. And being only four, he couldn't exactly say much, just sort of some broken words. Then, the TV went off with no warning. Then a bang upstairs, and then silence. We spoke for a good hour or so, trying to decipher what the heck just happened, but the car keys were in the other room, nowhere near any living animal or human. When we approached the car, me and my friend's partner, we checked if it was locked, and it was. We looked in the car manual and had a Google search and nothing comes up regarding the full beams just staying on and then intermittent hazard lights going off. There was no alarm as well, which was really strange and definitely nobody around. But since then, their son won't settle. Their little girl keeps waking randomly and crying and they've heard a couple of more bangs. I've never experienced car lights being set on or off like that before. 
Usually an electrical fault would happen when the vehicle is on, or you would have a, a warning light, but nothing. It's a newish car as well, so quite full of tech, and to be honest, it's been checked out, and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. I have had a few experiences myself, but usually with lights in the home, candles, noises, etc., but nothing to this level. Also, the first feeling that I had was sickness and dread. I've not had gut feelings like this regarding the paranormal for many years now, but I genuinely felt unwelcome and, I dare say, almost watched too. When I was in my early days of my career and joined an internship in a small town, a few of us were housed by the company that we worked for in a modified apartment. But they basically had joined two apartments together, so there were three bedrooms and a bathroom on each side, with a really, really long corridor in between. Now, towards the end of the assignment, we had a group presentation, so the bunch of us living on our side, we worked on the presentation together, decided to head very early into the office and practice. As per our plans made the previous evening, me and this girl called Simna woke up first around 4.30, so we could use the two bathrooms each and get ready. I didn't mind using the bathroom at the other end of the corridor, so I collected my toiletries and headed that way. Simna was doing the same on our side, and we didn't really talk as it was way too early and others were also sleeping. The two bedrooms on the other side were empty, and one was closed. I assumed that they were sleeping. I set my stuff on the counter, and realized quickly that I forgot my bath towel, so came out of the bathroom and saw Simna standing in the middle of the darkened corridor with her back to me. I sort of halted immediately because something seemed very off with the way that she was standing. The hair on my arms was raised up and warning bells went off in my head. I must have made some sound though because this person turned their head around to look at me. It looked exactly like her but she was smiling broadly at me, like really smirking. I quickly said, uh, hey, what's going on? To her, but at the same time sort of backed up into the bathroom where there was light and hot water to use as a weapon, I suppose. I didn't dare come out and I started praying. After around 20 to 25 minutes of time had passed, I Heard knocking on the bathroom door and my roommate's, not Simna, voice asking me if I was done. I didn't say anything to her. I couldn't understand it myself, but as I walked down the corridor to my room, I saw Simna getting ready in her room. I went to her and was like, what the heck dude, you scared me. And she did not know what I was talking about. I did not know this girl very well, but she was not a prankster from what I could tell. Also, it was too early in the morning and we were too geared up about the presentation for her to do something like that and to pretend like nothing happened. Till the end of that internship, she maintained that it wasn't her that scared me that morning. To this day, I cannot explain what or who I saw that morning. So my house was built in the 70s. Not particularly new, but not really that old, I guess, too. We moved here in the early 2000s. I don't really know any of the history behind it. But we've always joked that there are ghosts here. Doors slamming, creaking, and things randomly disappearing has always been blamed on ghosts. But around five years ago, it started becoming a, a tad more aggressive, you could say. The sounds of light footsteps in the hallway, scratches from the second floor and inside the wall. Mind you, we have no rodent problems, so it seemed sort of unexplainable to the entire family. Then, one day around three to four years ago, I was home alone sitting in the living room when a loud bang appeared from the second floor. It was so loud I was worried that the upstairs cabinet had fallen over on the floor or something, when the bang hit, my lights flickered too and the TV turned off and on. I could feel the shake all the way down the stairs. I went up to check what happened, obviously, and when I did, 
everything seemed the same. This has happened several times now, and it's almost entirely identical. A loud bang, a shake, flickering lights, but nothing ever seems out of place. What makes this worse too is that you can't hear it when you're upstairs, you can only hear it when you're downstairs. I know that sounds weird, but that's what happens. I've been called on my phone to stop slamming the door so hard when I'm laying silently in my bed and stuff like that, and I haven't heard a thing. In the past year, I've also started seeing things. I might just have imagined things, but at one point I could have swore that I saw a toddler sleeping in my brother's bed. I saw her pretty clearly too. She was young, maybe three years. She had long blonde hair and her arm hung over the edge of the bed. But when I approached her, she just disappeared. This was probably a year ago, but it still really confuses and spooks me. Then, a few weeks ago, I encountered her again. I was home alone when someone knocked on the door. I was a bit confused as I wasn't expecting anyone. As I approached the hallway, I heard the door closing and I heard a young girl saying, Hello! Like, she had just come home and was announcing her being there. I felt chills run down my back, but I still opened the door to look. My brother is five, and I figured that he might have just come home early or something, but no one was there. Today, I closed a door, like, properly shut, and then it just opened a bit again. And when I looked at the open door, it shut again quickly, closed. And now I keep hearing banging sounds from downstairs and I just don't know what to do. I'm like unironically kind of worried. Also, I don't know if this matters, but the dreams that I get in this house are always so vivid compared to when I'm not at home. Sometimes I, I wake up with the sheets off my bed and blanket as well because I sleep so uneasy, I guess. Anyways, I could really do with some advice. I don't think speaking to whatever this is works. I tried and I guess maybe things stopped being so noisy for a bit, but then it would just start up again and that's been a bit of a theme for this whole thing. So yeah, if you have any advice then please do let me know. Me, my best friend, her girlfriend, and my boyfriend were walking home from dinner and stopped at a 7-Eleven. My boyfriend wanted a couple of beers. We waited outside while he got what he needed. As we were outside, I noticed a girl with a backpack walking around the parking lot. She walked up to another girl who was on her phone, and girl number two said to whoever she was talking to, Yeah, my home girl here, one second and proceeded to tell girl one to go and sit in a car occupied by a large white male while she went inside. I noticed the male and the girl number one kept looking at us from the car while girl number two stayed on the phone inside. I specifically noticed that the male said something and pointed and girl number one laughed while looking at us. Here's where it gets sketchy too. Girl number one gets out of the car and comes up to my friend and asks her if she has a pen and a paper. She told her that she has a pen but no paper, and we didn't have any either. And here's how the conversation went after she received the pen. Girl number one said, where do you live? The trailer park behind here? Uh, no, but nearby. Girl number one said, oh okay, well my grandmother lives there. Where do you work? My friend said the name of a work girl and she said, oh really, I know that place. My sister used to work there. What's your name again? You look familiar. My friend tells her her name. She says, Oh, yeah, I think I know you. I knew you looked familiar. My friend has never seen her before, mind you. The girl says, So how far until you're home? At this point, my boyfriend came out of the store. The moment that he did, the girl instantaneously wrapped up the conversation and quickly retreated back to the car, saying, Well, thanks for the pen. Not even returning it nor did she write anything the entire time. She also kept trying to touch my friend. I did notice that, specifically at her wrists. The girl also had a hospital band on and was saying that she had depression or something. 
I noticed the man watching the entire interaction and said something to the girl the minute that she opened the car door. He seemed sort of frustrated with her maybe. But they watched us until we walked off, maybe a minute or two later. They proceeded to sit in the car for at least three minutes. At least that's how long it took until they were out of my sight. Probably longer since they made no effort to pull off. But the whole thing just seemed, I don't know, really sketchy and weird. Has anyone heard of anything like this before? I'm especially worried as my friend doesn't have a car and walks everywhere, so there's a good chance that she may be back there at some point. Should we be worried? So I was a security guard for this local company in my area. I was assigned to a water park with another guard who was uh, regularly there keeping watch. He was to train me and show me around and tell me what codes open what doors and stuff like that. But I first noticed how quick he was to enter and leave the property that he never wanted to spend more than like 10 minutes inside the property before he would be eager to leave. Our first night was simple. There was nothing exciting or interesting going on so our night dragged a bit. After a few hours I asked him if he'd experienced anything unusual while working here. He told me that he's had some problems with people trying to enter the property without permission, but that's about it. He also told me that he hated working there because of his encounters with these people. He said that they creeped him out because of just how sneaky they were. He didn't really want to tell me much because he was afraid that I would leave the post. That should have been a red flag for me, but I was too excited to let anything like that skip. A few more hours later and our shift is over so we check out and go home for the day. The next night my boss calls me to explain that the security guard, my partner, had resigned. I must admit that I was a little bit upset about that because now I have to work a two-man post all by myself with barely any knowledge on the place. Anyway, fast forward a few weeks I started to get the hang of things and created my own routine with no issues at all. There were no break-ins, no vandalism, nothing. It's now 2am and I was outside at the front of the property completing my rounds when I heard a door slam from inside. I jumped because of how loud it was and as I started to walk back into the property, I continued to hear doors opening and closing. I could feel myself getting nervous because it was my first situation that I've ever had at this place. As I walk inside and started to check the doors and complete around to make sure that there was no one on the property, I get to this corridor where there was a set of stairs that led down to a door that was wide open. I gingerly walk down the stairs to close and lock the door because I was too scared to take a look inside. But as I turned around to head back up the stairs, I noticed a man dressed in all black standing at the top of the stairs. I take a step back and realize that I'm cornered, and if he was to try anything, I would have nowhere to run or hide. So I politely ask him if he needed any help, and he didn't reply. I then ask him how he got into the property. He still didn't reply. He slowly turned his head and snapped his fingers, and then from the left side of the staircase, another man slowly crawled to his side like a dog on all fours. And at that, I turned around and kicked the door open and ran inside and locked myself in a bathroom. I did this as I called my boss and told them what I'd witnessed. They sent an armed security guard to my position to complete a walkthrough to make sure that I was safe. As I got the call that the area was clear, I came out and told them everything from start to finish. I realized that they didn't believe me, so I clocked out and went home for the night. The next morning, I received a call from my boss explaining that they had checked the security footage from the night before and what they told me horrified me. Every hour when I would complete my rounds inside the property, those same two men would follow me through the facility as if they were stalking me, like as if it was a game to them. After that, I asked for a new position because I was too horrified to work at that water park. I now know why my trainer didn't want to work there anymore too. And this actually happened to me. I have more creepy stories like this from when I was working security, so 
If you want to hear them, I'd be happy to share them, but thanks for listening, and it's good to finally get this off my chest. This happened a few years ago when I was just days shy of my 30th birthday. I was returning to the office in the middle of the afternoon after a not-so-quick trip to the DMV to renew my driver's license. At the time, I worked for a major corporation that was headquartered in downtown. The company has several parking garages, but unless you're a director or above at the company, you have to park several blocks from the headquarters. So... I had just left one of our parking garages about a block and a half away from my office when I heard someone begin walking behind me. Now mind you, this is a major city with a bustling downtown, so obviously nothing out of the ordinary there. I assumed it was just, most likely, a fellow employee. That is, until I glanced at the ground behind me. This employee was wearing athletic socks tucked into slip-on Adidas sandals, so, definitely not an employee of a Fortune 10 returning to the office or anything. I picked up my pace, and so did he. We had recently had several violent attacks on our employees by homeless people, so my company had stationed dozens of police officers and security guards around our campus as a precaution. I quickly made my way across the crosswalk to the courtyard, where they had all congregated, hoping to catch their attention as this person behind me closed in on me, but not a single one took notice. They were just completely oblivious. So the person behind me followed me into the building. At this point, I'm not too nervous. If his intention was to mug me, he'd have to be really stupid doing so while surrounded by police and security guards in a corporate headquarters building. But we have a Starbucks in our lobby that's always packed in mid-afternoon, so knowing that he'd have no opportunity to make a move on me with so many people around... I made my way into the coffee line. I finally mustered the courage to turn around, and when I did, he was gone. There, see? I told myself. I just wanted to make off with my bag, and now he's gone. After 15 minutes of waiting on my coffee, I began making my way back out of the Starbucks. But there's this tiny little nook too that's out of eyeshot of the waiting line, and as I passed it... I saw a pair of socks tucked into Adidas sandals, and when I walked out, he resumed his pursuit. That was the moment that my blood ran cold as well. He wasn't looking for just any target, he'd chosen me. He was determined to finish the job. About 20 feet ahead of me was our security desk. On either side of the security desk are sets of three security turnstiles, which only open with an employee badge or when opened by a security guard. Once again, I tried desperately to make eye contact with the security guard. She was on another planet though. And I basically sprinted through the turnstile and once I'd made it safely to the other side, I turned around to face my pursuer. He was a kid, no older than 17 or 18. Hispanic with a fade haircut. He had a small tattoo above his left eyebrow, a sleeve of tattoos upon his right arm, black pants and a baggy red t-shirt. Despite everyone around, he stood his ground at the turnstile and then he pushed on the glass gates and pushed again. I shot a look at the security and she was still clueless, but it was the metamorphosis of facial expressions on the kid's face that scared me the most. At first, it was blank. Is he on drugs, I asked myself. But it was quickly replaced by something else. It was fear. He looked genuinely terrified, like he didn't succeed in getting to me. Something bad was going to happen to him for sure. He pushed on the gate once more. His look of terror evolved into a look of sheer determination. I walked behind the wall separating our elevator banks from our security desk and walked to the other set of turnstiles, where I noticed an unoccupied security guard. On the other side, the kid mirrored my movements though. Ma'am, I told the guard, this kid just followed me from the parking garage, into headquarters, into and out of Starbucks, and just attempted not once, not twice, but three times to force open the turnstiles. And no one noticed. 
At this point, I was shaking with fear, so she assured me that she'd notify our officers to force him out of the building. When I went upstairs and told a colleague what had happened, she told me that I'd need to file a report with our company's asset protection. I think ex-military, security, police, those types. So, I did. And a few hours later, I got a call from one of the higher-ups in asset protection. A former Secret Service member and the guy who provides personal security to our CEO. He insisted on walking me to my car that evening too. The following day, around the same time of the afternoon the kid followed me the day before, I got a text from my new friend in the asset protection, and it was a photo of the kid. It read, is this your guy? And I said, yeah, where is he? He said, sitting right outside the entrance of the headquarters, he's 18 years old and has several gang tattoos. He asked, when he followed you, did he say anything? Any catcalling, chirps, anything of the sort? I said, no, he just followed me. He never said a thing. Why? Is that bad? He asked me to call him, so I did. I learned what gang he was based in on the tattoos, and which I won't reveal here for safety reasons. I learned I was clearly targeted and that the fact that he said nothing to me implied that his intent, whatever it was, was clearly very bad. He then asked to have me to put my manager on the phone and told both of us that I needed to stay away from the headquarters for at least a few weeks until they deemed the situation safe again. So, for the next three weeks, I worked out of my stepdad's office. But because we didn't know if the gang kid had targeted me at the DMV or after I had already parked downtown, we also didn't know how much he knew about me. So I was told to stay at my parents' house until it was safe to return. And my husband and I had just moved into our new house, by the way. But what gets really interesting is that my stepdad happens to be an in intelligence as well. And after he and his colleagues did some digging... It turns out that this particular gang had recently gotten heavily involved in human trafficking of all things. I asked one of my stepdad's colleagues why they targeted me. Weren't younger girls usually a target? Granted, I, I did look quite a bit younger than 30. He then told me that the price for someone my age could be sold for and I felt sick. After three weeks, the kid finally disappeared, but not without some intimidating persuasion. He apparently showed up once more during my absence. We learned that he occasionally rode with his dad to go pick up his little brother at the charter school down the road. His dad would go inside the school for 20 or 30 minutes every day, so they think the kid had someone nearby assigning him tasks or whatever the terminology is. I'm clearly very unfamiliar with that world. But on that day, three weeks before, I was that task. So one day, my stepdad's colleague, also ex-secret service, sat on a bench waiting for him to show up. When the kid's dad went into the school, my stepdad's colleague, who's 6'7", stood up, walked straight up to the passenger window where the kid was sitting, smiled, took out his phone and snapped a photo of the kid's face before walking away. Apparently, the kid lost it, asking, who are you, why did you do that, man, and stuff like this. The kid never came back after that day. It was easily the scariest three weeks of my life, not knowing if this gang member had simply developed a very aggressive crush on me or if his intentions were much, much more sinister. The one good thing that came out of it all, though, is that asset protection moved me into the director and above parking garage, which had an underground entrance to our office. Which means that I never had to walk those crazy downtown streets alone ever again after that.